Germany in the final of the men's singles at Wimbledon. Von Kram returns forehand. Freddie gets it back. Von Kram returns. Von Kram returns short. Perry runs up, gets it. Von Kram returns. Perry stabs and wins the point. Perry's attack is too much for Von Kram. Perry's next service gains him match point. With the score at 6-2, 6-4, Von Kram drives out and Perry is world champion. <laughs> Helen Wills Moody versus Helen Jacobs. I should perhaps have said clash, not meet, because this match up to now has been the most amazing display of vigorous, exhaustive tennis I've ever seen. Both have a set to their credit, 6-3, 3-6. This final set has gone backwards and forwards, first 2-1 and then 2 all. Then Miss Jacobs took the lead and went on to 5-2. Both players are now tiring, they just must. But Helen of the Moody Eye Shade again rises to invincibility and wins the set at 7-5. Two great Helen. Great Britain's air might. Fighters, bombers, reconnaissance, and coast defense planes of the Royal Air Force is assembled for inspection by King George at the Mindenhall Air Dome. And what a show it is. He has to drive for five miles along the parade formation of air fighters, the greatest concentration of battle planes ever reviewed by His Majesty. England has served notice on the world that her Air Force must be without peer, and this is ample proof of that determination. The King has reason to be proud of his aerial defenders. The Britons are not taking the backwash of anyone's propellers when it comes to air efficiency. Oklahoma bows in grief as the body of Wiley Post, Birdman Extraordinary, leaves the capital on its last journey. A journey in slow and measured tread, strangely in contrast to his triumphant round-the-world flights, to his remarkable stratosphere hops, and to the epic funeral flight from far off Alaska. Tenderly carried by brother flyers and newspaper pals, the man who wrote his name in gilded letters on the azure pages of aviation history comes to rest at last in Fairlawn Cemetery, Oklahoma City. Meanwhile, at Glendale, California, thousands have waited all night to bow at the bier of Will Rogers, the other victim of the fatal Arctic air crash. And now, in an unending stream, they file silently through Forest Lawn Park, past the flower-draped casket of the beloved humorist and screen favorite, Hollywood pays a last tribute to a departed pal and idol. There are special services at the studios. Here at Universal City, hundreds who revered the quaint cowboy who grew to be one of the nation's outstanding characters mourn his passing. And now comes the last touching ceremony in the wee kirk of the heather, a chapel that Rogers loved. And to this picturesque spot have come the great and near great to say goodbye. There's Will Hayes, czar of the motion picture industry, and Joey Brown, saddened by the loss of his friend. There's Postmaster General Jim Farley and Irvin Cobb, statesmen, actors, writers. Mary Pickford joins the sorrowing procession, grief-stricken and moved to tears. To Hollywood, as to all the world, Will Rogers was the salt of the earth.